This is what a working 19 inch Electrohome Geo 7 arcade monitor looks like. And hopefully by the end of this video, I'll own two of them. I'm Charlie and welcome back to Overtime Arcade. This is part five of the Ms. Pac-Man restoration series. In this episode, we're gonna turn our attention to the monitor. Like I said, I've got an old Geo 7 that I picked up recently. We're gonna get that sucker cleaned up, get decades of gunk and grime off of it. And then we're gonna do a ton of work to the monitor chassis. Uh, we're going to install a cap kit, which means we're going to replace all of the old electrolytic capacitors. We're going to install a new high voltage flyback transformer. We're going to install a new horizontal width coil and anything else that that monitor needs to come back to life. All right, let's go. Overtime. Is your arcade monitor filthy, disgusting, and dirty? Here's how to wash it in just a few easy steps. First, you'll want to discharge the monitor. Next, disconnect the anode cup from the tube. Remove the cardboard cover from the neckboard if you have one. Gently disconnect the neckboard from the tube. Then spray a healthy amount of simple green cleaner all over. You can use a soft bristle brush to help loosen up any dirt and debris from the chassis. Then hose it all down with very low water pressure. Go easy or you could accidentally remove the graphite coating from the back of the tube. Rinse and repeat as desired. An air hose on low pressure can help blast away most of the water. Set it out in the sun for a day to start the drying process. And let it dry out completely for several days before powering up the monitor. Okay, it's now several days later and everything has dried out completely. And uh, yeah, upon further inspection, I have decided to go with the G07 after all. Uh, it's just in much better shape. There's lots of issues with that 4900. Um, plus, I'll be working on two more 4900s coming up on my next two restoration projects or two of my next restoration projects. Uh, and thinking about it, I really haven't rebuilt a G07 before. The only other one that I've got uh, in my collection is in the centipede, which was working when I got it several years ago. And I, you know, knock on wood, haven't had to do anything to it. So, um, yeah, why don't we take this as an opportunity, uh, for me to really get familiar working with a G07. I've got all the parts I need. Uh, I've got a cap kit. Um, there's a couple issues going on here. Uh, this horizontal width coil is totally hosed. If you can see that. Um, so I've got one I'll replace it with. And plus this is the original, um, gray cup uh, flyback. And those are known for having issues. Um, lots of folks, you know, after they do a cap kit, end up uh, having that uh, flyback uh, crack, sometimes catastrophically exploding and shooting stuff everywhere. So yeah, I'm gonna replace the flyback. Uh, maybe that's an old wives tale, but there's too many stories out there of people with uh, flybacks failing, uh, the original gray cup flybacks failing on these G 7s after a cap kit, so I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll, we'll test out some other things too. We'll make sure the fuses are good. We'll make sure the, uh, the hot is good. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get this back in, in working order um, to put in our Miss Pac-Man. Uh, when I got this, I picked this up in a parts lot. I've never tested it out, so we're gonna be shotgunning this, which isn't necessarily the best way to do things, but I wanna do a full rebuild here, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so first things first, we need to remove the chassis uh, from the monitor, from the monitor frame. There's a couple of uh, connections that we need to remove. You know, obviously the anode cup has already been disconnected. The neck board has already been removed from the, uh, the neck of the tube itself. A couple other connections we need to remove. I believe this down here is the, for the DAG. All right, we'll disconnect that. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, we've got the yoke wires that need to be removed. That's this connector right here. There we go. Yoke wires have been disconnected. Let's pull those out of the way. Okay, and the yoke is this sort of um, cylinder or cone of, of copper wiring that goes around the, the neck of the tube. What else needs to be disconnected? Uh, so this grounding strap. I think that's the DAG wire. 
So that's good. Now the neck board really wants to hang out low. And that might be it. Let's see. Yoke wires. Dag. I guess this, no, this was actually the, uh, the Degas circuit, I think. Um, I don't see anything else. I think we are free and clear. So there are two, two bolts here to remove. That's one. Here's the other one over here. Okay. And now I think the chassis should just slide right out. All right, let me bring this over to the bench and uh, we'll start working on it. All right, I've set up a table uh, so that I've got lots of room to spread out and uh, work on this chassis. Uh, one thing that I've read that's important to do with uh, GO7s in particular is to discharge the filter cap, which is right here uh, on the chassis before you work on it. This thing can hold you know, quite a bit of charge and uh, even years later, and if you're not careful, uh, you can touch it and it'll, it'll potentially bite you. Um, I'll be replacing the filter cap and probably this has been discharged already, uh, especially when I washed the thing, covered it in water. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, the chassis will typically discharge this cap, uh, but that's controlled by the, um, uh, the fuse, which is right there. You can't, probably can't quite see it. Um, but if that fuse is bad, there's no way for it to discharge the, uh, the filter cap. So we'll just come in here with a screwdriver. I'm using my discharge tool. The alligator clip's not connected to anything. And I'm just going to touch these two um, leads. I can come in here. All right. All right. Those have been touched. And uh, we didn't see a spark or pop or anything. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Make sure that filter cap has been discharged before you go in and start uh, messing with things. So, all right. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, like I said, I've got all the tools I need, I think, uh, uh, for this job. I've got a cap kit uh, for the GO7 CBO from ArcadePartsAndRepair.com. I also have a new filter cap. I have a new horizontal width coil. Can't remember where I got this from. It was years ago. It might have been Arcade Parts and Repair. And again, a, a flyback, um, new GO7 flyback from ArcadePartsAndRepair.com. And so, all right, let's take a look here. And so here's the new flyback. Um, and it, it doesn't have, like most flybacks have the focus and um, uh, uh, screen knobs uh, attached to the flyback itself. With the GO7, they are separate, so we'll have to reconnect those. Um, but yeah, I think we've got, I think we've got what we need here. Um, and I got a little bridge here so that when I turn it upside down, it's got these high points so it can it can lean on without um, harming anything. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I think what I'll do first actually is remove the old flyback uh, just because um, that'll make the chassis a lot lighter and easier to move around. So let's take a look at all the different points we need to remove. Um, so this is nice. This goes to the neck board uh, from this connector here. So that doesn't need to be removed. I believe this foot can be pulled back, this little rubber shoe. Here we go. And then it's got a little solder point right there. Uh, and then, is that the uh, only two wires? Yeah, okay, that's great. Uh, the anode cup has already been removed. So let's go, we'll disconnect this part first. We'll add a touch of fresh solder. It already wants to come right off. And then we'll come in with our desoldering tool. Remove all that old solder. All right, let me grab my needle nose pliers and just bend that loop back. There's a little 
the, the wire has been bent into a hook uh, so that it can loop through this little eyelet. There we go. All right, so that's clear. And now we can come back onto the underside of the chassis and remove fly back here. Okay. I balance this upside down without harming anything. Okay, so it looks like three points here on the flyback, or um, not three, five different points on the flyback. Uh, plus, okay, now there's this loop continues over here. I see. I see what's going on. All right, let's actually just touch this up with a tiny bit of flux on my flux pen. All right, we'll add a little bit of solder to each of these pins and then remove them. Okay, I think I've got it uh, fully disconnected. All right, um, I don't know if you saw, I actually changed out the uh, tip on my Hakko uh, desoldering tool, put a, one with a, a larger diameter opening just to get around the bigger uh, flyback pins. Uh, removed all the solder, had to come back a couple times on a few of them, but I think we're in pretty good shape. So let me see if the flyback will come right out. I don't know if there's any other additional sort of mounting points that are holding it in, but hmm. let's see. Oh yes, I think there's a, a screw back here, two screws back here holding that fly back in. So let me grab my screwdriver. See. Yeah, it's on the new one too. So we'll remove these two screws. Yeah, now it wants to fall right out. Okay. There we go. There's the old flyback out and off of the chassis. Doesn't look too bad. I don't see any cracks or anything. So put this off to the side. I never like throwing away things like that. Especially when we don't know for sure that uh, you know anything's wrong with it. But yeah, everything looks good so far there. We'll remove this with coil. And you see a little bit of, if you can see it on the camera, um, Residue here. I don't know if this is from the simple green or, or whatnot, but this stuff kind of comes right off um, I see a little bit of heat on the board uh, kind of in this area um, So we'll we'll pay uh, attention uh, to the components here um, Doesn't look too bad on the On the solder side, but yeah, there's a little bit of heat on the component side of the chassis kind of in this area where we've got these two big heat sinks um, so yeah, why don't we remove the width coil next. Okay, now it wants to fall right out. Okay, look at that. There is our trashed with coil. You can see that. There we go. This part has become disconnected and it's blew its top off. Let me show you what it's supposed to look like. 
Okay, here's what the repro looks like and what the original one looks like. This one would have had a little top hat on it originally too, and a little piece of uh, ferrite material that goes up and down the coil to adjust the width, the horizontal width of the monitor, which is completely missing here. So uh, <laughs> that's totally shot. Isn't that kind of neat? Just goes and goes and goes. Okay, and it just wants to fly off on its own. Okay, we'll keep moving along here with this chassis. Um, so I'll add those parts, those new parts back in uh, at the end. This makes the board a lot, a lot uh, lighter to work on. Um, but we can we can work on the rest. Oh, you know what else? Let me pull this. Uh, pull this filter cap. Okay, here's the old filter cap. Uh, let's see, the original here is 200 volt, 600 microfarad. And our replacement here is a 250 volt, 680 microfarad, which is what Peter recommends on uh, arcadepartsandrepair.com. Next step will be to go through uh, the cap kit and uh, replace all the old electrolytic capacitors on the board uh, with new ones. Um, basically, these these caps are you know 40 plus years old. Uh, this chassis has a I'll show it to you, a uh, manufacturing date code right here. See that, GO7 CVO, uh, December, or 20 December, 1980. So right before Christmas of 1980. So this thing is nearly 42 years old, uh, which means the caps are definitely 42 years old because they were made before the chassis was put together. And, um, you know, over time those capacitors just um, crap out on you, right? They stop working. Um, uh, they can leak. They can, you know, kind of wander out of spec, causing all kinds of issues. Um, so we'll go and um, replace them. And so we've got this kind of guide here that comes with the cap kit uh, from Peter and other, other vendors do this, giving you instructions on, you know, every single cap, every single position, um, which ones are bipolar, which ones you know require uh, you to respect polarity, which ones are on the neck PCB, because there are uh, actually just one on the neck PCB to replace, and uh, some other important um, uh, notes and instructions. So I'm gonna read through this real quick and then we'll hop in and uh, do the cap kit. Okay, I think we're good to go here. There's a couple of notes here and instructions uh, a couple of uh, caps in particular that have some additional notes on them that we'll, we'll be sure to pay attention to. And the system that I like to use is to go one by one, one at a time, remove the old cap, install the new one, uh, do a couple of them, like maybe we'll do a row at a time, uh, and then test all of them, trim the leads, uh, and then um, uh, move on to the next row. And we'll cross each one off the list kind of as we do them. And all three, all, all of the first three have something interesting going on. Uh, the first one here, C107, is on the neck board. C301 is a bipolar uh, uh, or non-polarized uh, capacitor. Uh, C302 has a note uh, to it about the uh, silk screen being wrong on the solder sign of a PCB, sort of telling you what the polarity is. So those will be interesting ones to, uh, to start with. And, uh, yeah, let's see. I just had my – yep, there it is my pencil to uh, go through and cross things off the list. So let's get started with C107, which is on the neck board. And that should be a 10 microfarad, 250 volt um, capacitor. And there are two of them uh, in this little baggie. So we'll look for a set of two. All right, we've got that right here. So double checking, 10 microfarad, 250 volt. And that's what we've got right here, if it'll come into focus. 10 microfarad, 250 volt. So 
pull that off of the strip, which sometimes is a pain. Okay, get some of the excess tape off the leads. We don't want that interfering with the solid connection. Okay, so there's our new cap. Our old cap is, like we said, this is the one on the neck board that we need to remove. Here's the old one right here. 250 volts, uh, 10 microfarad. Can you still see this? Let's move this up just a little bit. Okay. So let's see, where are the two? Right there. You might not be able to see this one all that great. And uh, actually, I need to put the smaller tip on my desoldering tool, which is really easy. I'll show you how I do it. There's this little, um, I guess, grabber that uh, prevents you from having to touch the super hot thing, a nozzle by yourself. Drop the old one out. Use a heel nose pliers to grab the, the other one. Uh, here we go. We'll just drop that back in here. It's getting a little bit dirty. Drop that in. Oops. Twist it back on and we're good to go. Okay. Sorry about that. So let's remove C107 from right here. That should fall right out, and it does. Uh, okay, looks like uh, negative was on this side, and that's indeed how it's silk screened on the PCB, if you can see that. Put our old cap over here. Got our new cap. Again, respecting polarity, which isn't marked, doesn't look like on the solder side, but is marked on the component side. So I'll put it in all the way. You want to have it kind of somewhat snug or, or yeah, snug to the, to the top of the board just because that makes it less likely for uh, any stuff to come underneath and potentially short, short it underneath. Um, this isn't something that most people recommend, which is kind of bending the leads to hold it in place, but let me just actually tack this down. All right, that's not our real solder joint. Now I can come back with this one, make it straight. Like I said, sometimes you can bend the leads to kind of hold the capacitor in place while you're soldering it, but then that can cause issues later when you try to remove it or you or someone else tries to remove it. All right, um, you know, that bend can make it difficult to get all the solder off. So we'll come back and unstraighten this one or straighten up, unbend this one, straighten it out. Okay. All right, that looks good. We'll be checking the uh, continuity on these in a, a second, but so far, first one looks good. Um, let's see. So we'll scratch that one off the list. C107 is done. Next one to do is C301 on the chassis, which is a, a bipolar or non-polarized uh, capacitor. So we'll move the main part of the chassis back into frame and uh, quickly see if we can find C301 um, from the silkscreen uh, side here. Usually um, similar, similarly numbered uh, components will be in the same area for the most part, but you can't always rely on it. So it looks like these are 100s, these are 400s, 500s, 900. 
Let's see, more five hundreds, more five hundreds. So the sucker's probably hiding somewhere, 400, 400. If you see it, shout it out. Here's some 300, X301, C303, which means we're probably close. There it is, okay. C301, looks like it's right. Right here, is that right? Yeah, okay. C301 right there. So we'll come in, move it. You know, with cap kits, I often don't add new solder just because, you know, these usually have such a small, tiny amount of solder on them where there's not much holding them in place. All right, that one popped right out. Let's look at this old one. Uh, 50 volt, 3.3. Microfarad, if you can see that, and this doesn't have a uh, a stripe indicating polarity. So on this this other one, the first one we removed, it has this this stripe sort of saying this is the leg that's the negative lead for a polarized capacitor. This one you'll notice doesn't have any marking like that, and it says BP uh, right here, if you can see that indicating bipolar. Um, so that's great. Let's pull out our corresponding uh, part from the cap kit. We're looking for 3.3 microfarads and 50 volts bipolar. That might be this right here. All right, one interesting thing uh, I just confirmed is uh, C301 uh, on the Arcade Parts and Repair uh, cap kit instructions calls for a 3.3 microfarad at 50 volt bipolar. And the original is also a uh, 3.3 microfarad, 50 volt bipolar. But included in the kit, there's supposed to be two of these 3.3 microfarad, 50 volt bipolar caps. Uh, but the only bipolar caps in here are actually 3.3 microfarad, uh, 100 volt, if you can see that, which is fine. It's, you know, when replacing capacitors, it's always safe to use one uh, with a higher voltage rating. That's really just a, like a safety rating, like what the what the capacitor can handle. Um, but unless you know what you're doing, you don't want to use a different capacitance rating, which is the, um, the microfarad rating. So here we go. 3.3 uh, microfarad, 100 volt bipolar cap, which needs to go right in there. Okay. There we go, C301. Pop that sucker right in. Okay. And bend. Let's see, we'll bend one of these to the side just temporarily to hold that in place. can come back with the other one, bend it back up, and solder it in. All right, that looks good. Cross that one off the list. And number three is C302, 220 microfarad at 50 volts. So 220 microfarad, 50 volts. be three of them so that's a trick I use to find them in the kit uh, look for the ones that have the right number 220 microfarad 50 volt that's this right here pull one of these off the strip get the gunk off okay C302 is what we're looking for, should be in the vicinity of C301. It's right here, C302. But there's a note on the instructions here, which is something I've heard before, 
uh, C3O2, important note, the polarity of the cap, uh, capacitor is silk screened wrong on the solder side of the PCB. So on the solder side, which is this side, uh, it says positive is on this side for 302 and negative is on this side. So which means we should see the negative sort of marking on the capacitor on this side, which is my right. And if we flip it over, it's not. Negative is on the left. And negative is marked correctly on the component side here, if you can see it. So let's go and remove this cap. Just want to double check, make sure everything is in frame. Okay. And yeah, I know this desoldering tool is expensive, but it makes things so much easier than using a solder sucker or a solder pulp kind of thing or, um, you know, even a solder wick, right? Going really old school. Um, and if you're doing lots of, uh, you know, soldering work, desoldering, replacing things, you know, like if you're doing a cap kit, uh, it just makes things go so much faster. Um, and so that's why I featured it in the, uh, the holiday gift guide that I recently did. So, okay, there we go. So C302, polarity is correctly marked right there on the component side. So that's what we will follow when we insert it. So here's the negative stripe indicating that this is the negative leg. We'll insert, insert that here, which is backwards on the solder side. Let's see if that'll hold in place. Not really. So let's do our trick from before, bend them both to the side, solder one of them, just tack it down temporarily. And then come back, put that one in nice and straight. Okay, that looks good. We'll move the temporary solder from right here. Uh. Straighten out this leg. That's a little bit, a little bit messy, but that'll be fine. Okay. I think we're in good shape there. So we'll scratch that one off. And so now at this point, we can do a little bit of testing. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to try out one, a new tool that I got. This uh, transistor tester uh, automatically identifies and tests lots of different types of electrical, electronic components, including transistors, diodes, resistors, capacitors, capacitor ESR. So I want to test these old capacitors and uh, see if they're any good. So what you do is take one of them, and this one I think was from the neck board, We'll straighten out these legs so we can get them into the connector. Okay. Let's see if it'll fit. Maybe just barely. All right. So we've got that in there. Press test to turn it on. Little LCD screen with like a set of Autobots or Decepticons uh, logo. Testing. And let's see. No or unknown, probably just got a bad, bad connection. There we go, finally got it working. As you can see, <laughs> you know, the connection's a little flaky, uh, but this is telling us that uh, this capacitor has an actual capacitance of 92.68. It's supposed to be 100, so I guess that's, you know, within 10% or so, with an ESR of 0.34 ohms, which I guess is okay. Um, I don't know, I really don't know much about this uh, stuff, but uh, cool. Okay, so let's see if we can try testing again one of these older capacitors. Okay, I was able to get this one connected properly. Uh, this was the one from the neck board, uh, 250 volt 
10 microfarad, uh, you can see that the capacitance rating is still pretty good, uh, but that ESR 2.3 ohms uh, is a little bit, little bit high. ESR stands for equivalent series resistance. Uh, you want that to be as low as possible uh, for your caps. Um, as caps age, the, that ESR rating gets higher and higher and, you know, just causes problems. Let me test this other one here and see if it'll come through right. Okay, we see this one. This is the bipolar 3.3 uh, microfarad 50 volt uh, capacitance. Um, it has a nano uh, farads there, but that should be 3.3 micro. Again, ESR is a little bit high. So probably good that we're replacing these in this last one. Let's see if I can get it in here. So yeah, this is a new tool for me. I've, I've played with it a little bit, but this is the first time I'm actually using it. Um, I usually just replace the old caps without testing them, but you know, it's better to know if things, were, if things were bad. Okay, got this one going. Like I said, should be 220 microfarad, and it's, that's low. That's only 161, almost 162 microfarad. So the ESR is pretty low but that capacitance is a lot lower uh, than it should be. So we're seeing some caps that are out of spec. So, you know, maybe it's good that we are uh, replacing them. So we've put the new ones on the board. Um, we can come in here and test continuity, make sure that we've got a good connection where we want it and that we don't have a connection where we don't want it, um, which could be a, you know, potential short should be bad news. So I see my, we'll do the neck board first. Okay. You can see that there, barely. So we've got uh, good solid continuity there, continuity there. You always want to do more than one point just so, you know, good there, good there, and no continuity between the two pins. That's great. Let me grab my side cutters, micro cutters, whatever you want to call them. And actually, wait a second. All right. We'll double check polarity here, which isn't marked on the solder side, but is on the part side. And we have the negative stripe aligned with the dot on the PCB. I'm going to mark this with a Sharpie on the top, just so that I know that that one has been replaced, so I can double check all that. And while we're here, we will trim these leads back. You want to do it a little bit above the kind of peak of the solder. You don't want to cut into the solder. In here it's windy and rainy outside, but my kids are still playing as they're maniacs. All right, so that one is totally good. We'll come back with these on the board and I've got the legs sticking up so I know which ones to test. Let's see, there's C301. Test for continuity with other parts in the same circuit. So that's good there. That's good there, okay. And this one only has two, so that's good. And they aren't connected to each other, so that's good. And we'll do the other one right here, C302. That is good solid connection there and there. The other leg, good there, good there, and not connected between them. So those are good. So yeah, if you hear that momentary beep, that's usually fine. But a sustained beep is obviously the sign of a, a short or a connection that you don't want. Let's remove these uh, legs the excess length of the leads cutting above the solder, not into the solder. Okay, flipping the board back to the top. Just be careful with the neck board and the um, adjustment pots for the flyback. And uh, these are the two that we did right here, right? <laughs> so I just realized I made a mistake, but uh, this is not a bad mistake. So, uh, I did correctly install C302. Uh, so we'll mark that one with polarity being respected, uh, ignoring the misprint and the silk screen on the, the, um, 
Uh, solder side on the component side, there is a dot on the board indicating where the negative lead should go. It matches up here, so that one's good. That one's totally done. But the part that I removed here, did I do this right? Yeah, okay. No, I didn't make a mistake. So right next to C302 is C520, which is also the same, you know, 3.3 microfarad um, bipolar cap. So I thought for a second that that's the one that I replaced, but no, I actually did it right. C301 is down here. Um, so let's check the polarity on that one. Or excuse me, it doesn't have polarity, it's bipolar. Uh, so that one's there, that one's good. We'll mark that. It's a little bit crooked, but um, just double checking that it's not wiggling on the, the solder side indicating a bad joint. So that's there, that's good, and we can completely cross off these first ones on the first row. So, um, yeah, the next one, maybe I'll show the next couple. I'm not going to do all of these on camera. The next one, C303, also has a note. Uh, this is a uh, 22 microfarad, 50 volt uh, capacitor. It says, if CO3 has an electrolytic capacitor already installed, then the sync upgrade is probably already been done, but make sure to replace the electrolytic capacitor with a new one for the kit. So the sync upgrade, also sometimes called the curl mod, which isn't necessarily uh, accurate, uh, is something that you do um, if you've got a, a pin cushion or, or you know, a weird fold over um, on your image. You know, it's kind of controversial, you know, whether or not you should do this. Um, but, you know, some games, I guess, uh, respond well to it. So let's find uh, C303, should be in roughly the same area. I can't remember, did we see that one before? C303 is right here, okay. So let's take a look on this side. And it does not have a electrolytic capacitor, it has this old um, poly cap uh, or whatever that is, um, metal film, I don't know. Uh, I'm not an electrical engineer. I can't necessarily identify these by uh, eye. Um, so it says if C303 has an electrolytic capacitor, which it doesn't, that's not electrolytic, uh, then the sync upgrade has probably already been done. So this has probably not been done, but make sure to replace the electrolytic capacitor with a new one. So we'll go ahead and remove this one and put a new electrolytic capacitor in. So yeah, C303, which is right there. Silk screen's probably upside down for you to see on camera, but there's not a great angle here where I won't block the camera with either my head or my hands. And I need to be able to read this stuff so I can see what's going on. And I don't want to, you know, put shadows here. So there's uh, C303. Clean that up a little bit. And I'm guessing, hmm, what I'm not sure about is, polarity. Because this doesn't have a polarity marking. And you can see on the solder side, there's no, that I can see polarity indicator on the solder side, and then on the part side. Is that a polarity indicator right there? I don't know, let me look this up and uh, I'll come right back. Okay, I'm <laughs> glad I double checked and looked that up because my guess would have been wrong. Uh, a couple different places confirmed that uh, the positive uh, leg, the positive lead should be closest to the edge uh, of the chassis and uh, in the same circuit as the collector of X305, which is right here. Uh, and the original spacing used by the uh, ceramic capacitor is a bit wider and there's a couple different positions here. So we're going to remove the solder from this sort of second position uh, or the second pad. And that's the one we'll use for um, the connection. So 
and I guess we can refill that old one. But we've got our tiny little 22 microfarad 50 volt capacitor. And again, we want the positive leg to be towards the outside. So pop that sucker in right here. And that leg over just to hold it in place temporarily. Okay. We'll solder this in place. Bring this one back up. Solder this lead in. We can cover up this old tab real quick. There we go. So yeah, we've got the negative leg towards the inside, the positive leg towards the outside. And let's check that it is connected to the collector of X305, which is right here. So that's good. And I think that's the only thing in that circuit, so that's good. And then the other leg, that's good. Good, all right, I think we've got a good installation there. So let's mark C303 off the list, and while we're at it, mark it with the Sharpie. And it doesn't hurt anything to put that Sharpie marker on the uh, the top and if you notice a lot of these uh, caps have the the sort of top cover uh, scored uh, Like there's almost like pre-cut lines in it so that if the capacitor explodes That's where it goes not sideways. I guess to control the sort of um, Control that explosion Okay, so um, Yeah, why don't I continue working on this off-camera? I'll go in uh, changing the rest of these caps uh, I'll stop um, at any point if there's anything interesting to point out and show it to you and otherwise I'll come back at the end of this cap kit uh, and then we'll do the uh, We'll do the uh, new flyback. We'll do the new horizontal width coil. We'll test the hot. Uh, we'll probably reflow the header pins uh, So stay tuned for that All right, the cap kit is complete uh, Everything went well for the most part just a, a couple of small items to note uh, one, there's this little shield uh, here on the board that covered up a couple caps. So I had to remove that, desolder that, get that out of the way, replace the caps, put that uh, cage back on, which is no problem. One thing that I thought was interesting is uh, a couple of these caps here, 517 and 518. Uh, when I was doing my continuity uh, testing, I was getting consistent continuity across the positive and negative leads of both of those caps. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Uh, I did some research. People have, have noted that before. Wasn't really, I guess, determined to be an issue. So uh, I really haven't examined the schematics of this board to know if that's supposed to be there or not, but uh, just something to point out for now. So, uh, and I also did not perform uh, the sync mod, sometimes, sometimes called the curl mod. Again, uh, if I've got an issue later on with the, uh, the image in Ms. Pac-Man, I can always do that then. But So uh, a couple things left to do. Still need to reinstall or install the new filter cap right there. Uh, obviously need to install the uh, new flyback. I want to reflow the header pins. Um, I didn't notice any you know, obvious bad cold solder joints, uh, but it's always a good idea to reflow your header pins, especially in the video signal connection. Uh, need to reinstall the new horizontal uh, width coil. And I know I said that I was going to pull the hot and uh, test it, but uh, the way the hot is sort of soldered uh, onto this chassis, it's a bit of work to get it off and get it back on. So uh, I'm going to leave it alone for now. If we've got an issue, obviously that'll be something to uh, take a look at down the road. Okay, so what should I do uh, first? Why don't I reflow the header pins? And one thing, um, one sort of trick when you're doing that is um, you want to kind of do it, and I guess this is sort of, well, the, the, there's a, a trap or a, uh, something that can happen when you're re reflowing header pins is you can actually push the pins sort of out of place. 
uh, which is not good. So one trick to avoid doing that is to uh, have a cable plugged into those positions while you are reflowing them so that they don't get moved out of place. And I'm actually just going to grab some of the cables here, the test pattern generator cables, and I'm gonna use these to hold the pins in place while I perform the reflow. All right, a bit of a pain, but I got them in place. Uh, so now those pins aren't gonna go anywhere while I reflow them. Uh, so this is really basic stuff. Add a touch of fresh solder to the old solder, remove all of it, and then I guess I can put some flux on first. Um, yeah, add some new solder to the old solder, remove all of it, and then add all fresh new solder uh, to the joint. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, and as you saw, I did swap the uh, larger pin, or the, the larger size uh, nozzle onto the, onto the desoldering tool. And then I also alternated um, the pins that I was uh, reflowing just to minimize the risk that I was knocking anything. out of place. All right, that's good. So I will go and uh, do the other set of header pins for the other uh, sink position uh, and then be right back. Okay, I've reflowed the header pins and that looks good. Next thing I wanna do is actually test the fuses uh, on the chassis here. And you know, what's interesting about the G07, it has two fuses um, and they're not in fuse holders or fuse clips. They're, they're soldered directly to the chassis, these little pigtail um, fuses. So uh, you've got to desolder them uh, to test them, which is kind of a pain. And then they are, you know, a little bit non-standard to replace them. Um, let's see. So I think we come in right here. All right, let's see if that got it loose. Come in real gentle with the heel nose pliers. Yeah, that's it. Technically, you only need to lift one leg, just like a resistor to sort of get it out of circuit uh, for testing. Come on. This little one's kind of in there. Okay, so let's see. Uh, like I said, this is a, a pigtail uh, fuse. See how the leads are really just part of the, the end caps. Um, so let's go ahead and test continuity on this. All right, so that one's good. Uh, we'll solder that back in in a second. Let's pull the other one out, the bigger one. And uh, <laughs> I always lose things going back and forth, flipping around. Fuse, is that this? Yeah, okay. That's right here. Uh, 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 uh. Let me actually add some fresh solder because that's being a bit stubborn. Okay. You know, the new solder always makes the old solder come off easier. That looks better. Right. Yeah, that's that's free now. Let's see if we can get that to 
slide right out. So this is F902, and the other one is F901, as they're marked on the chassis. Come on, little guy. There we go. Now it's tangled up in these wires. There we go. So there's the other one. Both of these visually look okay, but you can never trust that. So we know the small one was tested as okay. Let's test the big one. The multimeter on continuity beep. All right, both fuses tested good. Uh, I'm just gonna solder them uh, back into the chassis and I'll come right back. Okay, I've got the fuses back in. Uh, so I think the next thing I wanna do is install the new filter cap, uh, which goes right here. And what's interesting is you can see there's a difference here between um, sort of the, the pin configuration or the lead configuration of the old filter cap and the new one. The old filter cap has, um, you know, sort of leads A, B, and C, and then a negative kind of design to help stabilize such a large cap. Uh, this one does not have that. The new one just has uh, two leads that kind of clip on. So we're going to use a different sort of set of um, uh, uh, vias or through holes on the PCB kind of, um, you know, I guess they designed this with some foresight. They gave us a couple of different options for mounting onto the PCB here. So we'll go and clear out the new holes. All right, those, those pads look clear. So we can flip over and we want to make sure we're respecting polarity, negative to the negative sort of indication here and positive to the positive marked right on the silk screen. Same thing here. Negative is indicated by this big dot and negative on the negative stripe of the cap. So we'll want to line this up and kind of snap it right in. All right, I took this over to the light on my real workbench and I was able to line it up and snap it in. So we can flip it over. And the sort of new legs, or the legs of the new filter cap, just kind of lock it in place. So uh, we just have to solder that in there. All right, that looks pretty good, I think. Let's double check continuity. That looks pretty good. Okay. Filter cap is done. New filter cap in place. Last two things we have are the flyback and the horizontal width coil. I think I want to do the flyback first just because you need to manhandle the chassis sometimes to get that lined up. And the horizontal width coil is so delicate. Here's our new reproduction flyback for the G07. All right, let's compare these pins to the old one. Okay, that looks right. One thing I want to do is steal the old rubber uh, boot off of the old flyback and put that on the new one before we solder it on. All right. So uh, when installing a new flyback into a chassis, you know, you've seen me do this before with the, the play choice monitors or one of the monitors at least, um, is it can be tricky to get the holes to kind of line up or get the, the pins to line up uh, with the holes on the chassis. So uh, let's see how this is going to work for us. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pins I've got to line up all at once, plus these screw holes on the side. Let me see if there's a good angle here where I can 
kind of get a sense of where I'm going and what I'm doing. Usually once you get a couple of them, they can start to guide each other to the right spots. All right. <laughs> After much wrestling, we are in. All of the pins are in. I'm going to use gravity to hold it down for a second. And then I'm going to come in with these the screws and screw the fly back to the side of the chassis. The chassis, what would you call this? Not the frame necessarily. Bracket, something. All right, do that very gently. All right. Can you see that? These two screws holding it in. And then we flip it around and pins one, two, three. Can you see it? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and ten are all poking through. So let's go ahead and solder those in. All right, flyback is done. That's great. Uh, that, that wasn't so bad. I've had much worse struggles trying to get a flyback into position. So I think, I think the last thing is the new horizontal width coil. All right. I think that's at the max position. Should I make it in the middle? Should I dial this thing to the middle position before I install it? Let me see which TV adjustment tool will be a right fit for that. For the life of me, I could not get any of my TV adjustment tools to fit into the ferrite core of the new uh, horizontal width coil to make it move. It was just kind of stuck and none of the, the tools were fitting properly. So I did something you're not supposed to do, which is use a metal Allen key uh, to get it moving. Obviously you cannot do that when the game is running or when the, mo the monitor is running because you will short things out for sure. Um, but I kind of got it into a middle position, if you can see that. And we'll just deal with it when, uh, when we have to adjust it inevitably inside of the uh, game while it's running. So maybe I need to order some new TV adjustment tools that maybe haven't been worn down as much. So let's figure out exactly where this needs to go on the on the board. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Huh, before I install that, I forgot to make this connection here on the on the flyback. Um, I'm gonna look up something. I think you're supposed to trim back this wire. Um, so we'll come back and do that in a minute. But uh, okay, so let's put our horizontal width coil in. Uh, we've got these legs here. I guess there's larger ones and shorter ones. So this should just fit right in. Okay, I think I got it on now. Uh, some of the legs were pre tinned and had a little too much solder to fit through the holes, so not a problem. We remove that, and now we are ready to solder this new horizontal width coil in place. Okay, that's good. Um, so yeah, oh yeah, I forgot that um, one wire that I need to connect on the flyback. 
like I said, let me double check what the right thing to do uh, is there and I'll come right back. Okay, I forgot an important step. Uh, this is why it's always important to read the instructions. Um, basically, let me show you on the old flyback. So the focus wire here, this white wire that comes out of the bottom uh, and connects to the, uh, the terminal for the knob there, has to be wrapped around the flyback and then fished through this uh, hole right here and come out here and then come over here. And I had forgotten to do that. And uh, I really didn't want to disconnect or desolder and disconnect the new uh, flyback and then do that and have to redo it again. Um, so through a bunch of uh, <laughs> little acrobatics, I was able to get uh, everything fished around through and it's through the hole and things are good to go now. And I'm ready to reconnect the focus wire or connect the, the focus wire from the new flyback uh, onto this terminal here. Uh, I've got the rubber boot sort of fished on. I've got all this maybe six inches, four to six inches of excess wire to cut off. I don't want to cut off too much and then not be able to make a good connection. Um, and I only have, you know, obviously a couple of tries to do this. So maybe, maybe right about here uh, would be good. All right. Let's see. Uh, I can even take a little bit more off. Just be careful because you can never, never put it back on. Let's see. Yeah, that should probably be good. And uh, yeah, we got close quarters here. Let me go and strip this wire. Let's see, I want a little bit more than that stripped. Okay. And uh, we'll twist this. And basically, there's a little eyelet that we can hook our focus wire to. And then uh, solder it in place and cover it with the little rubber boot. Okay, let's see. We'll keep this nice and twisted. It'll come like this. And then let's extend it this way. Okay. Of course, when I bend it, Wants to come untwisted. All right, let's fish this through the eyelet. Okay, fold that over. It looks, I think it looks okay. So now we can solder that. And hopefully, you can see this fairly well. What I'm doing. Uh, I try to get a good angle for you all on camera, but I also need to see what I'm doing. Okay, I think that looks... That looks pretty good. Okay. And now we should be able to fish this rubber boot up and over. Get caught on stuff, here we go. Just to protect this connection here. From being exposed. Maybe I should have given myself a tad more slack, but I think we're good. All right. How does that look? Good stuff. So. I think we've done everything. So let's let's recap what we've done. <laughs> well, we recapped the board first and foremost. Uh, did a cap kit. We what else did we do? Uh, put a new flyback on. Put a new filter cap on. And let me just double check that. Got the polarity in the right place. Yep. So I can mark that as good. Okay. We put a new filter cap on. Reflowed the header pins. Uh, put a new horizontal width coil on. Where is it? Right there. Um, tested the fuses. Uh, we did not test the hot. We'll uh, come back and do that if we need we to. We not do the sync mod, also called the curl mod. Um, but I think we're ready to go and uh, test this thing. 
So uh, let me get the camera set up for that and I'll come back in just a moment. All right, let's get the chassis reconnected to the monitor for testing. So we'll come in like this, nice and gentle with the neck board. Um, kind of goes in like so. Ah, okay. I guess right like that. So our two screws here, our two bolts. Those back in. Okay, that looks good. Now we need to make some connections. See if I can remember all of these. Um, okay. Oh, I believe this one goes here. Okay, and that's the uh, DAG, the DAG wire. I think that's the only thing for the neck board. Can put the neck board back on. Gently work it back in. Make sure it goes in all the way. There we go, until the plastic part is kind of flush. Oh, and I've got my old uh, cardboard cover that I'll put on with zip ties in a couple minutes. Uh, let's see. Let's see, we've got the yoke wires go over here. They kind of want to go on like this. How does that look? That looks pretty good. Anode couple doing a second. Uh, we've got the, the Degauss circuit plugs in over here. And I think we are in business. Uh, let's see. DAG is plugged in, neck board is plugged in. Yoke wires are plugged in. They look like they're seated all the way. Uh, the gauze is in. Let's put the anode cut back on. Looks good. Okay, uh, all we need is power and a video signal. Um, we're going to use my test pattern generator here. I think I've shown this before. What did I step on? An old zip tie. Okay, <laughs> that was not a fun crunch to hear. Uh, we're gonna use our test pattern generator. I've got my video cables here. Got the standard cables for this Pac-Man RGB going here. I think we can use positive sync. Or not. Uh, we'll use negative sync. Okay. So I don't think I can get these in right here, can I? Yeah, I guess I can. Here we go. All right. And I uh, had it, uh, the signal inverted before for Nintendo which I don't need now. Let's plug in our video signal. Kind of a pain to fish this in here. Whoops. Man tight quarters back here. Newer monitors or later monitors uh, 
changed up the design so that you could attach the video signal kind of on the edge like Nintendo ones are right here. Okay, that looks like we're in business. Okay. Uh, let's see. So for power, we're going to use, like we did to test the PCB, we're going to use the uh, transformer assembly uh, from the cabinet because it's got the isolation transformer that we need. So one sort of interesting thing here is the plug, the power plug coming off the transformer doesn't exactly match, uh, if you can see that, the power plug uh, for the, uh, the monitor uh, coming off of the um, Coming off of the, the transformer, we got two half circle shapes. This one takes a half circle and a full circle. Uh, they do still match up though. Uh, I just have to make sure I don't have it backwards. So um, if you remember, these aren't colored, right? We have white uh, for hot and black for common here, ground, or yeah, common, neutral. Um, and uh, we've got a ribbed one here, which means hot. So we'll plug it in like this. I always remember, you know, uh, neutral is smooth and hot has a rib to it. So that should be good. Famous last words. And we've got this um, grounding clip to clip onto the, the chassis frame. So I think we're in business. Let me set up the monitor so that we can see, sorry, so that we can see an image. I don't know if this will be upside down or not, but Okay, and we're not going to see Miss Pac-Man here, uh, but hopefully we see the signal being produced by the test pattern generator. All right, that all looks good. The ground is still attached. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, what do we need to do? We need to disconnect this. We're not using that anymore. That was to power the uh, uh, soldering iron. Uh, making sure that none of these other wires are connected to anything that's gonna cause trouble. We'll plug this in. Okay. Uh, and I think if we pull, pull the interlock switch, we have HV. Something's working. Turn off the lights. Is there anything coming up? Hmm. Well, I've got net glow. Let me see if maybe the Brightness has just turned down too much. And which one is the brightness? Oh, it's the bottom one because the top one is the. There we go. We've got raster. And let me turn on the TPG. Holy cow, look at that. <laughs> we have a signal. And it's really not bad at all. Let's see if we can adjust the focus a little bit. That looks pretty good. All right. It's kind of showing up funny. This there is no line here. That's just an artifact of the, the monitor. Uh, horizontal width looks useful. Yeah, I think we're in uh, decent shape here. Uh, colors could use a little bit of adjusting, obviously, and you can you see that burn really good. Actually, it's not as visible on camera. The burn comes in pretty obvious here. But uh, yeah, I need to adjust the green a little bit, balance the colors. But I'd say this was a successful rebuild. I'm very happy with what I'm seeing. Yeah, green's a little off, but all the colors are there. All right, well, uh, I will mess with those colors on my own time until I get a really nice picture. I'll dial everything in, the, um, 
you know, all the, all the different adjustments. Got a little bit of a curl up here. I don't know if I can adjust that out um, or end up, we'll end up doing uh, the, uh, the mods recommended by arcadepartsandrepair.com. But yeah, uh, I'd say this was a successful rebuild for this monitor. Um, here we go. Makes it look a little bit better. I kind of changed the uh, focus point of the camera. So yeah, um, like I said, this this sort of line here does not exist uh, in real life. It's just an artifact of the of the camera. But um, yeah, uh, I'm very and now it's flickering. But again, that's just the camera. That's not the actual image. The the camera. The uh, <laughs> here we go. The uh, the monitor itself is nice and stable. Just the camera doesn't really know how to handle it for now. But um, yeah, like I said, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I'll dial in everything on my own time. But uh, yeah, this is the monitor that we'll use uh, for the cabinet. So what's next? Um, let's see, uh, not too much uh, in terms of getting a working game. Um, we need to do the control panel. We need to get that all cleaned up. Uh, we need to address the coin door, take a look, make sure that everything's going good there. I know the, uh, the coin counter had been removed. We'll find a new one to put in there. And uh, then we can reassemble everything and hopefully have a fully working game. Um, and uh, it'll still be a while before I redo the side art uh, on the cabinet. Uh, like I said, it's, you know, I'm going to be doing a re-stencil. So we'll have plenty of uh, prep work, uh, sanding and bondo and more sanding and making sure the cabinet's in tip top shape and, and ready for paint to be applied. But I probably won't be able to do that uh, re-stenciling on the cabinet until things uh, warm up again, because uh, you don't want to apply paint when it's cold out and it's uh, getting to be the cold time of year. But um, yeah, so we'll have to take a little bit of a hiatus from this project while we're waiting for things to warm up enough to paint. But uh, I think we're getting really close here to having a working game. So uh, yeah, hope you're excited. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Charlie and this has been Overtime Arcade. I'll see you on the next one. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.